Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle, and I'm continuing a brief series of screencasts devoted to the idea of value at risk mapping or VAR mapping. And in this case, I'd like to illustrate a mapping of a European call option for FRM candidates. This example comes from Chapter 11 of Philip Jorian. And previously, I illustrated how we could map a linear derivative that was a forward contract on a, a foreign currency. This time we're mapping a nonlinear derivative which is a European call option. And remember what we're doing with VAR mapping. We're trying to take a portfolio which in real life is complicated and identify a limited set of risk factors so we map the portfolio to the risk factors and then we can analyze the risk factors, stress test it, ask questions like what if we change this factor or if this interest rate is shocked by some amount, what would happen to the portfolio? So here let's look at how we could map a nonlinear derivative, specifically a European call option. This is the way illustrated in Jorin. It's not the only way to map a European call option. But in this case, to describe the option, we want the six inputs that are common to pretty much any option pricing model we use. And I'm going to use Jorian's numbers directly here. The share price, that's the underlying asset, is $100. The strike price is $100. So this is the right but not the obligation to purchase the stock for $100. The volatility on the underlying asset, the share, is 20%. That's a standard deviation, so if we square it, we'll get a variance. Uh, the riskless rate is 5%. We'll say the option has a three-month term. And since these are annual units, that's 0.25 or one-fourth of a year is equal to three months. Finally, the dividend yield on the underlying asset, which is the share, is 3%. So the dividend on the stock is 3%. And here is the formula for the Black Scholes Merton that gives us the price or value of the European call option. And so Jorin uses this as a way to map the option to its underlying risk factors and really two underlying risk factors in this case. So we say the European call option is equal to the share price minus the strike price although the strike price is continuously discounted to the present, so I like to say this call option is really just the share price minus the discounted strike price. Both are probability adjusted by the standard normal cumulative distribution functions. N of D1 happens to be the delta of the European call option. N of D2 happens to be the probability that the option will be struck, at least in the risk-free world. Now, so if we substitute that delta in here, N of N D1 for delta, we have the same formula. The delta number of shares minus the discounted strike price times N of D2. Now this discounted strike price is just $100 discounted to the present. So in the Black-Scholes-Merton, which is based on a no arbitrage idea, this is really like a loan. This is the present value of the $100 that we need in the future to exercise. So Jorian calls this really, we are short a dollar, we are short the dollar bill, or we are specifically short the present value of $100 in the future. Or we borrow today what we need at this riskless rate in order to have $100 in the future to exercise the option. And now we can use this formula here to just show that this discounted strike price or being short the US dollar is equal to the price of the call minus delta number of shares. So if we take this and substitute it back in, we'll end up with a formula that's obviously true because it's a bit circular or tautological but that's okay it explains our mapping logic the call option is equal to delta number of shares minus here this quantity in parens which we've already said is how much we are borrowing or we are short the US dollar bill 
And this is, at least in this approach, Jorian's approach to mapping the nonlinear derivative that is a European call option, we are saying the call option can be reduced to two risk factors or is equivalent to being long the stock or share, but not the full share, delta number of shares. So we're long the stock and we're short or are borrowing US dollars. Hopefully there is some intuition to that because after all, if we borrow for the strike price, then in the future we'll be able to repay that strike and own the share. We are economically equivalent to a call option. So with these two positions, we can now map this option to the two risk factors or the positions that represent the risk factors. In the first case, we are long the asset. We're now saying one European call option is equivalent to being long the asset and that is right here, stock price times delta. So I'm just gonna enter that in. I'm gonna take the stock price multiplied by the delta here, which we've already said is N of D1. And so we can be long, not a full share, we're long a fractional or delta share, which in this case, if the share price is 100, we are, in the case of a single option, we are long a fractional share. We are long 54% of, uh, of a share or $53.98. And we are short this amount here, which is the value of the call option. That's $4.20. I already computed that with the black shoals. The Black Shoals option pricing model is telling me that this option is worth $4.20 and then I'm subtracting our long position here. And you can see in the formula this has to be true. The fractional share ownership is, cancel, is canceling out and we end up here with our short position and I'll put a minus sign in front and so it has to be true that the difference between these is our call option. But the point is we've now taken a single position, a long position in a European call option, and that price, the price or value of that uh, uh, call option today, that small c is $4.20. And we've deconstructed it or broken it out into its two risk factors in this case and we've said holding that call option is equivalent to being long the fractional share in this amount and short the US dollar bill or borrowing at this amount. And that way, although at first glance it may seem more complicated, that way we can operate with our analysis directly on what, the, what happens to the asset in the underlying asset, in this case a share price, and what happens to the underlying dollar bill, in this case an interest rate. As I said though, there are other risk factors that go into the option pricing model. There are uh, five or six, depending on if it's, if it's uh, dividend paying or not. So we could take other approaches to mapping the option. This is the one illustrated by Jorian. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thank you for your time.